no troubles linger still Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies Is always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine the God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? church. I am so happy to see you guys all here today. Your joke this week is, also comes from Annie this week. What time does the duck, do ducks wake up? At the quack of dawn. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor, let them know how happy you are for them to be here.
make our way back to our seats and continue to worship.
bird in every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you. you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to.
I hope that's your surrender today. There's no one to whom we can better surrender everything to him. Well, as you know, we have this tradition every Sunday of putting the one-on-one Bible front and center right where it belongs. And last week, Larry and Linda Wicker stayed home because they had, uh, little Owen had a fever. But while he and his grandparents were watching the one-on-one church service online, that didn't keep little Owen from trying to help Jonah move the Bible. Look at that. His big sister, Abigail, is helping too. So thank you, Owen and Abigail. They're here today. <laughs> Jonah needs all the help you can get. All right, Jonah, let's move this thing. And we've got some helpers. We would be glad to have you guys help them too. Here we go. <laughs> Beautiful. We do this every week just to remind ourselves that it's all built on the Word of God. All of it, absolutely all of it. And everything I say is to be judged by God's Word, and everything we do, we want to be in accordance with His Word. Let's give these kids a big hand. Let's give all of our kids a hand. They're heading to their classes. Teachers, we love you. We celebrate you as well. If you are... (laughs) Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was... You did, you did. It was a big help. They know Jonah can't make it without their help, so it's, it's important. Hey, guys, if you're worshiping with us today, we'd love to get to know you better. Just grab one of those welcome cards, if you would, please, and uh, check uh, the appropriate box, first time to attend, and uh, just help us get to know you better. It would be a delight. In a few moments, you can drop in the offering. And uh, if you can't get it in time, just leave it on the seat. We'll pick it up later. And for all of those of you who are worshiping with us online, on YouTube and Facebook, uh, what a joy to have you worshiping with us today. It's ended up being several thousand of you every week, and we are so grateful. We are so honored to do that. You see also in the cards here in the room, I asked Jesus to be my Savior today. We're going to give you an opportunity, if you've never done so, to pray to receive Christ at the close, and you would use your card to let, me, let us know that you made that decision. If you'd like more information about baptism, any areas you'd enjoy serving, and of course your prayer requests, you can write them here, leave them on the card. Also, we have one-on-one ch- on Facebook, Facebook, uh, forward sla- facebook.com forward slash one-on-one prayer wall. And uh, so uh, you can leave your prayer requests there as well. And we've got a growing uh, army of prayer warriors who lift one another up in prayer. Well, guys, we have been so blessed. Uh, Nearly 400, not quite there yet, uh, leaders in 42 different countries who have asked us to, would you please send us your message notes, your graphics, your videos, everything. So we have those as resources. Would you please pray for us? And uh, so uh, what a joy it is to do that. These are our one-on-one movement leaders and uh, in so many other countries and uh, also around the United States as well. Well, today we introduce to you Fred McCory. He leads the Mercy Foundation Orphanage in Embassy, Kenya. To help pay expenses, he works at the Pump Oil Company in Nayrock County. Here's what he says. Thanks for this kind of word. I feel much encouraged and moved to this ministry and work together. I minister with a group in local area as I teach children orphans the spiritual growth. It will be good for me and the children orphans when you are part of us. I see you, the love you have. I will keep in prayers and in touch with you. What an honor to partner with this precious brother who ministers 8,000 miles away. Well, gang, the Bible tells us, give recognition to those who work hard among you. So we honor those every week with those who are doing more with their jobs than just earning a living. These are the people who put God first with their tithes and their offerings, and in so doing, they lay up heavenly treasure for all eternity. Well, today we've been doing it a little differently for the last several weeks. We are going to continue our list of the 21 most hated jobs in America. Now, we're not talking about drug dealers or bank robbers. We're talking about legitimate professions that have a bad rap. I have to say, I was stunned to find this one on the list, but it's number nine as we count down teachers. Well, if you've ever had a bad teacher, this may be how you feel. Maybe this teacher played favorites in class and you weren't one of them. Maybe they graded your work harshly and unfairly. Maybe they put you down. Maybe they were boring or obnoxious 
or just plain bad at explaining the subject in a way you can understand, giving you bad grade after bad grade. Or maybe you have a friend who's a teacher who constantly complains about their long hours, their unruly students, impossible demands, and low pay, as if that were somehow a surprise when they took the job. But you know what? If you've ever had an awesome teacher, and I have had, you're horrified to find such a high and holy profession on this list. Perhaps you've had your share of bad teachers, but hopefully their impact is completely overshadowed by the amazing difference a great teacher can make on your life. How many of you would say, I have had one or more great teachers, and I'm thankful for them. Let's thank God for our great teachers, and especially for those who are faithful to the Lord with their tithes and offerings. Well, as our usher service this morning, it's just a reminder that you can also give your tithes and offerings in a number of ways. You see at the very bottom, uh, the way you can do on online, over the left, you can use the Facebook donate button. Uh, you can text your giving right there in the middle, 812-202-4200, or you can simply mail it in, post office box 15153. Uh, Thank you so much. Judy and I give that way, and so many of you do, or you can just give in the offering today. And uh, what an opportunity to lay up heavenly treasure for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, um, it's a joy to have people on the worship team who know the Lord and love Him with all their hearts, and every single one of these people who lead us in worship has just exactly that. Amy, lead us in prayer today, would you please? Father God, it's such an honor to come and be in your presence the presence of the Holy Spirit, Father. We come and we worship you with all that we have, Lord. We worship you in song and in spirit, Father. Father, we thank you for all of your tender mercies, for your loving kindness, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you've provided, and we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all of those gifts, for all of your mercy. Father, as we worship you now with our tithes and with our offering, I ask that you would bless each gift, each gift that it would go further in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, 
rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will people said, Amen. Thank you so much, band. Beautiful. We've had one goal during this month of January, and that's to fill your spiritual tanks for this long road ahead of us in 2023. Well, the scripture says in Colossians 1.9, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom an understanding that the Spirit gives. He gives it. So far this month, on the first day of this year, full of hope. And that's what I, that was our focus. Then on the second week, full of faith. On the third week, January 15th, full of joy. And then last week, full of purpose. We've just been filling that tank, filling that tank, filling that tank. I've hold, I hope you have experienced each one of these messages that have built, been built on the Word of God. Last week was 1, 2, 3, Go Sunday. And as you know, on January 23rd, which was the day following, what we said is, look, instead of doing New Year's resolutions, let's wait till January 23rd, 1, 2, 3, and let it be a 1, 2, 3, Go time where we ask God, what do you want to do through us, Jesus? What do you want to do through me in 2023? 20, uh, what, what, what do you have in mind for me? And as we prayed about that for several weeks, we used the first part of January to pray about that. We wrote it on cards last week after praying together. And then we walked out and went back here to the parking lot. And we gathered in a big circle and we sang together and we rejoiced together. And uh, then we offered those cards up to, it was just between the, uh, you and the Lord. 
We offer those cards up to the Lord in the fire as a sweet-smelling fragrance to him. And we said, Lord, help. If this is indeed what you want me to do this year, then I pray that you fill me with yourself and that you enable me to do it and bring it to pass. If you missed it, here's a little taste of what it was like. beautiful time. God, bring it to pass. We've, we've laid it before you. Now, Lord, only you, only you, only you. Today, we complete our January series with Full of Love. Our one-on-one tip today, straight from Ephesians 3, the love of God. There's nothing like it. I pray that you being rooted and established in love, This is not a surface planting. This is sending your roots down deep and being established solidly. May have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. It's bigger than anything you and I can comprehend. It goes to the very core of our being, the very marrow of our bones, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Here's the thing. Love is the key to full understanding. You can only get so much of it just by figuring it out. My goal, Paul writes to the church at Colossae, is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding. Complete understanding doesn't come just because, just through book learning. Even Bible knowledge is so important. But then the love that God gives and that He gives alone brings to you a different level of understanding. God is love. And the closer you get to Him, that one on one relationship with Him on which we have founded this church, that one on one relationship, the closer you get to Him, the more love you feel because that's who He is in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures. How many? All. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And guys, when you are sharing your faith with people who have not yet trusted Christ, um, it's not just the theology. It's the love. John wrote a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, this is Jesus. He's quoting Jesus. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. How much has Jesus loved us? All the way. All the way. No holes barred. He says, that's how I want you. I've shown you how to love. Now love each other that way. By this, not by your theology. Now look, if you're looking for a new church, You should check out the theology. You don't want to go to one that's preaching heresy. You don't want to get in some kind of cult. So you got to check that out, but that's not the big deal. Once you know that the theology is right, and if you are visiting a church, and this is especially for those of you online who may not even be churched at this point, you need to get in one. But if you're looking at that, once you make sure that they're preaching the word of God, then I recommend you show up and check out the love. That's what he says. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I have to say that this experience you and I have had more than nine years now has been characterized by one thing, and and we all say it. It's been the love in this room. It's just been his love. The love you have for one another, it's the love of God. It's bigger than the love human beings alone. Uh, 
just I'm, I'm doing 10 times the hugging I used to do because there's just so much cotton picking. I hug people that don't, aren't even comfortable being hugged. So, you know, you can just put your hand up if that's not who, you, and I'll try to control myself. But this is an amazing thing, the love that God has, and it's available to everyone. And if you are looking for a church and you, you find one where there's a lot of love and their theology is right, you might have just found your home. True love isn't, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. That's trade on the open market, guys. Jesus said it. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. How easy is that? Somebody that wants to do you harm, somebody that doesn't like you and wants to see you fail, how, how, how hard is that? Why, it's not, it's not possible to do if you've got your wits about you. But it's possible to do because Jesus tells us to do it, and he enables us to do it. He says, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Seriously, you do me a favor, I'll do you one. How does that point anybody to Jesus? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? You pay what you owe. I won't throw you in jail. Come on. Jesus says it's got to be greater than that. They've got to see me in you. Love is far more than a new egoy feeling. Dear children, John writes in 1 John 3, 18, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Now look, words are good. And we have a lot of good words and supportive words for one another. I've received so many good words from so many of you. And you have too. <laughs> and those are some good words going on in that classroom right there. Yeah, squeal of delight, let's hope. <laughs> but if the words are not backed up with action, they're empty. Maybe you have somebody in your life who says all the right things. They never follow through. They don't do it. And it just, you don't give up on them. But, it, but then when you hear the words, they just sound so hollow. They mean nothing to you. And that's exactly what John is saying. But with actions and in truth, you say you're going to do it, you do it. Um, recently, um, we, I, I had, had somebody explaining who another person was. Uh, on their team, and they said, let me tell you about her. They said, if she tells you something, you can turn around and forget it. It's going to be done. That's the kind of person you want to be, and it's the kind of person we want to hook up with and, 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 and love in Jesus. That's the kind of relationship we want to give to one another, which brings us and you knew we had to go here to the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. Some have called 1 Corinthians 13 the greatest chapter in the Bible because it's about the greatest subject. Paul writes, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Doesn't matter what you say. Doesn't matter how good you are linguistically, what your gifts are to write or whatever. Doesn't matter if you don't have love. If I have the gift of prophecy, now we're getting into some powerful stuff, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, a lot of us would say, if only I had that kind of faith. But if I don't have love, I am nothing. It didn't say I'm less, it just, I'm nothing. If there's no love there, what's the point? Okay, you got a mountain mood, but you don't care two hoots about me. If I give all I possess to the poor, wow, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. God says, seriously, that's all? No love? No, no heavenly treasure. And then we get to a definition of love. And it's what we just read in 1 John. Love is patient. Anybody here have to work on that a little bit? I do. You know, I 
give you a chance, give you another chance, give you another chance, seriously? <laughs> God help me. At lights, when I'm in a hurry and the purple person in front of me is on their cell phone and light change and yeah, patience, patience. It does not envy. Somebody's got a bigger car, nicer home, more money. Doesn't boast. Look what I've got. Look what I did. It's not proud. Check me out. It does not dishonor others. You know, you can do that. You ever catch yourself just so upset with someone that you rip them to another person instead of giving them the honor of one who is made in the image of God? I've been guilty of that. Forgive me, God. I've got to do better. Got to do better. Scripture says, it is not self-seeking. Here's what I can get out of it. It's not easily angered. Doesn't say you can't get angry. You just don't have a hair trigger. If you're the kind of person who fires off quickly, ask the Lord's help because it's not loving. That's what he's saying. Love doesn't do that. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Whoa. That just undermined some of our best arguments, doesn't it? You're in an argument with somebody that you've had a relationship with over the years. Maybe somebody that you really love. But uh, you're arguing with them and what you're tempted to say to make your point is, remember three years ago when you... And he says, no, you don't do that. Don't remind somebody else of how they blew it. Don't keep a record of their wrongs. They need a fresh start just like you do. Love does not delight in evil. Ha, 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 that happened. See, he had it coming, didn't he? No. But rejoices with the truth. The truth is, we all have it coming. And what we need is mercy, and so do they. It always protects I think this, this last, this verse 7, is especially for those of us who have someone in our lives who just keeps letting us down again and again and again. Got anybody like that? It always protects, always trusts. Hey, you're blowing it now, but I trust God that he's going to do a work in you. Always hopes. You've just got this picture of what they can be. Always perseveres. You just never give up. It doesn't matter how much evidence they give you that they're, that, that they're a, a totally lost cause. You just persevere. Because, verse 8, love never fails. You don't want God to give up on you. Don't give up on them. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that's all we've got now. That's all, I, that's all I've got. That's all you've got. That's all we have here on this earth. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When, when does completeness come? When, when does that come? When we all get to heaven. We just sang it. That's when completeness comes. We're not complete now. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Some of us, myself included, still have some childishness in us, even after a number of years. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Maybe time to grow up for me, for you, for us, and not slip into the behavior you see with a couple of five or six-year-olds. Verse 12, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. You know how when you do one of those selfies and you put it out there and you're, the lettering on your shirt's backwards and, <laughs> or a reflection in, in, a, in a bad mirror and it's just, we don't see the whole picture. It's all we, it's, sometimes it's just backwards of what we think it ought to be. But then, then, when, heaven, is when we shall see face, by, face to face. Now I know in part. 
That's all we'll ever have down here. That's all. Then, in heaven, I shall know fully, and how fully is that? Even as I am fully known, which means, how much does God know you? He knows the full story. When you and I get to heaven, we'll know the full story. Yesterday morning, shortly after midnight, our precious daughter Abby went to be with the Lord. When she was eight years old, she prayed to receive Christ with her mom. Judy led her to the Lord. Over the years, her faith grew. She became solid as a rock. We didn't know just how solid until the end got close. One of the things that happens every once in a while when someone, somebody uses one of these electronic ways to give, and especially this one, which is Cash App. That's not even on our list, but some of us in our family give that way. Uh, I got a notification, an email, that one of our members had given their tithe. That was about two weeks ago. It was Abby, right before she went into the hospital. Still putting God first, financially. She knew she was close to cashing in on all that heavenly treasure we've been talking about for a long time. And besides, it wasn't even about that. It was just her being faithful like she always was. A couple of weeks ago, Abby heard the news that nobody wants to hear from a doctor. And she said, is this it? And he said, yes, it is. She said, how long do I have? He said, a few days, no longer than two weeks. She took that in. And from that moment forward, and Judy will tell you the same thing, she had one foot in earth and one foot in heaven. Her focus was on where she was about to go. It looked like this was her, and let me just say this about that. Those of us who love her, and that's a lot of you in this room, we're walking two tracks. Number one, we knew there's a God in heaven, a God who heals anything. He's not afraid of cancer. He, can, he, he raises the dead. He can heal someone a day before the doctor says they're supposed to be gone. And so we prayed that as fervently as you can pray it, and some of you were praying that right along with us. But we were walking another track at the same time, and that's this. The scripture says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Yesterday morning, that was written in God's book. We didn't know it until it happened. But yesterday morning was written in God's book. And once it's written there, that was her day. That was her time. And all the praying and begging we did beforehand, God raise her up and heal her. God is not angry about that. He says, you have not because you ask not. We weren't going to be guilty of not asking. But we knew the whole time. It may be that this is her time, though we had not a clue why. And we told him all the reasons why it was probably a mistake. And he just sweetly and let us listen. It's not that he couldn't. It's not that he couldn't have. It's that was her day. That was her time. Shortly after that news, Abby gathered the family together. And... Uh, we were all gathered around her hospital bed. And uh, she went to each of us one by one, just looked at us, and said, what do you want me to tell your loved one who's gone to heaven? She knew she was going to soon be there. And uh, do you have any messages you want me to pass along to grandma and grandpa when I see them? To your sister when I see her, to your mom when I see her. And the tears streaming down our cheeks, we gave her message after message after message to pass along to the loved one she was about to see. Tears streaming down our face, she was calm. She kept saying, it's going to be all right. She was comforting us. I sat there at her bedside watching my daughter in and thinking, God, that is faith. That's dying faith. That's knowing where she's going. 
And let me just report to you, for those of us who prayed our heads off for her, our faith has not diminished through this battle. It has increased because we see in her heaven's reality. And that is true for every single one of you as well. Yesterday morning, she took her last breath on this earth. Her husband was beside her. Pretty soon, some of her family members were beside her. Judy and I hurriedly dressed. Ariel, Becky, those who could get there. But we knew what was going on. Even as Judy and I made that trip, we dreaded. Shortly after midnight. The angels, Jesus explains it. The angels had come to usher her into the very presence of God himself to heaven. She saw Jesus walking toward her with a big smile on his face. Felt him wrap her in a warm bear hug and whisper in her ear, well done. That's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want. That's what I want. One of our family members who's had their own struggles said, I'll tell you one thing. Heaven has never seemed more real to me now before than it does now. It's hard to argue with this verse. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Did Jesus, did Jesus do that for you? Yes. And if you put your faith and your trust in him, oh, listen. Your family may mourn one day because they miss you, especially if you've been a loving person. You don't want to be, well, good riddance. You want them to really miss you because of how much love you had to give. But they won't mourn. Nor do the, does the Schwambach and Hirsch families and the others. We don't mourn as those who have no hope because we know where our sister, our daughter, that mom is, that wife. We know. And that is an encouragement and a comfort that this world cannot give. You want that for yourself. You want that for your loved ones. If you've never given your life to Jesus, and I'm speaking to those of you online now as well as, those, as well as those of you in the room, bow your heads with me and let's pray this prayer. And I invite you to pray it right now to him. Just say to him, Jesus, I admit it, I'm a sinner. I don't deserve heaven. I know what I deserve. It's hell. But I believe, Jesus, you really did die on the cross for sinners like me. I believe you didn't just die for me, but to prove your God, you rose again on the third day just like the Bible says you did. Just like history records you did. And so I'm putting all my faith in you now. All of it, Jesus. I, ask, I can't do this on my own. You know that already about me. But I'm asking you to come live in my life and help me to be the Christian you've called me to be. Help me to live for you from this moment forward until that day when you call me home. And I stand before you to give an account of my one and only life. And when I do, may I see you walking toward me with a big smile on your face. Feel you wrap me in a warm bear hug and whisper in my ear, well done. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray this together, church. It's straight from Scripture. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now, and forevermore. Amen. If you prayed that prayer online or here, and if you meant it, Take one of those welcome cards if you're in the room. Fill it out. Let us know you've made that decision. We'll send you free without any obligation. 
uh, some important information that will help you build on this decision. If you're online, just message me. I'm on Facebook, uh, Steve One On One, or email me, Steve at One On One Church dot com. If you think today's service would be a blessing to your family, to your friends, it's saved online. Share it with them. Well, guys, this Saturday, February 4th, our men's and women's small groups plan to meet at the church. Men at 8, women at 10. If you'd like to attend attend online, be sure to email us, let us know. Email Debbie, our women's small group leader, gracehappyhouse at aol.com. Email me, as always, steve at one-on-one-church.com. Lord willing, next Sunday, don't wait. Let's say Jesus' words together. Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. And now let's bless one another with the word of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now before you go, Dana Elder sent me this meme. If Paul saw the church in America we would be getting a letter. That's the state of our country. You all see it, don't you? That's why about once a month, we sing this song, and it's a prayer. Let's sing it together. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. And let it begin. And one more time from the heart, it's a prayer. Lord, Send a revival, Lord, send a revival, Lord, send a revival, and let it begin in me. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to One on One Church.